from around the globe. It's theCUBE, with digital coverage of IBM Think 2021. Brought to you by IBM. Welcome to theCUBE's coverage of IBM Think 2021. I'm your host, Lisa Martin. Today I have a new guest, new to theCUBE, Madhuri Chavla, the Director of Strategic Partnerships for Enterprise Application Services is joining me. Madhuri, it's nice to have you on the program. Thank you, Lisa, very excited to be here. And hello everyone. So different this year again, virtual like last year, we're going to talk about digital transformation. We saw this huge acceleration in 2020, the massive adoption of SaaS applications. We want to talk though about IBM managed services for SAP applications. So before we get into that, I'd love for you to be able to describe what your role is to our audience. Absolutely, Lisa. So good day, everyone. Um, I've been with IBM for over 23 years and in my current role, I run the strategic alliances uh, for IBM basically in the ERP space, SAP being our primary strategic partner. I have a global team of architects and we basically look at market requirements, talk to a lot of customers, talk to our business partner SAP obviously, um, you know, try to help them with come up with a solution for their transformation journey to the cloud. And hopefully today, you know, we'll elaborate a little bit more on the exact work that we do in this space. So very happy to be here. Thank you, Lisa. Sure, so we're going to dissect the IBM SAP relationship. I think you even worked at SAP before your 23 year tenure at IBM. So we'll get to some of that as well, but help us understand customers have so much choice. Each day there's more and more choice. Why should a customer choose IBM as their strategic partner for this digital transformation journey? Well, really IBM has been in this uh, SAP business for many, many decades, as you know. Um, we have many, many certified people in SAP, close to 40,000 people actually globally. Um, and we can help the clients in, in various aspects of their journey. So, you know, the typical cloud journey has four different aspects to it. Um, you will need the advice. So you need basically systems integration services to help customers actually define the scope on, you know, what they actually want to either upgrade, uh, bring it to current, as well as, you know, what workloads they want to move to the cloud. Uh, we can help customers with our systems integration services called the Global Business, Part, uh, business Services in IBM. Uh, we can help them with their entire planning. We can help them with the actual move to the cloud. So IBM offers a whole different variety of services for migration for not only just the SAP workloads. I mean, SAP typically ends up being the heart of the workloads that any of the major customers run, but surrounding SAP, there's a lot of other applications. So we can help plan that entire journey for advice and then you know, move it as well as in the interim, you know, there's also another step which can be some customers that need to build net new and, and you know, upgrade their applications to the latest um, technologies. So we can help them with that. And then once the build and move is over, obviously customers need help with the actual steady state, run state environments. That's where this key service that we have, managed services for SAP applications helps them. So our certifications with SAP and the fact that we have consultants that are certified in all these different aspects of the journey can really help your clients. The other part I would say that IBM is really a hybrid cloud provider. So obviously we have our cloud service, the IBM cloud, but we can offer this service meeting the customer where they need to be. So we are a client centric service. So if the customer has a choice of AWS or Azure, uh, we can meet them there. So this is how you know, we can really help our customers with our expertise. Another data point to note that, you know. 70, 80% of the enterprise customers still have not moved their workloads to the cloud. So this is a space, especially with COVID, as you've seen what's happened, you know, customers now are really, really looking to accelerate the journey because it's become a necessity. It's no longer something that a CEO and CIO can push to the right, right? This is something they have to act now. So IBM with all these various services, you know, specifically geared in the SAP area, um, and given that we've been managing these production workloads for a lot of these enterprise customers on our cloud services for many, many years, we have the experience, we can truly help them with their journey. Yeah. And as you said, that's so critical these days. One of the things that I think we learned in 2020 is, is there was no time like the present. It really became such a massive shift that 
for business survival, those that weren't digitized definitely were in some hot water. But talk to me, so you talked about the, the IBM SAP relationship being longstanding. Can you talk to me about the different aspects of the Alliance and how that helps you guys to meet customers where they are? Sure. Um, so SAP and IBM, we've been strategic partners for over 46 years. That's a long time. The partnership obviously has evolved over the years, and I'll talk about you know, a few of the different aspects where we've been partners. Um, you know, the Alliance initially obviously started, you know, IBM is in multiple businesses, as you know. We are one of the largest uh, systems integrators in the world from a global business services point of view, as well as one of the largest application managed services providers. So that's uh, you know, part of the Alliance. Then we have our server groups, the power systems that IBM has, so that's another you know, dimension of the alliance where, um, you know, five, 6,000 plus SAP clients even today are still running um, their SAP applications on the power systems, whether it's on premise or also in some of the cloud deployment models. Uh, historically, we also had obviously the database DB2 alliance, but now with the SAP's move to HANA, um, that's kind of a little bit of a mute point. Obviously it still exists, but most of the clients are now obviously being encouraged really to adopt SAP's latest um, S4 HANA. Uh, from the services standpoint, the other facet you know, is really around the cloud services. So that's really our topic today, right? Um, in the cloud services area, we have alliances with SAP, very, very strong alliances that have existed for you know, almost a decade now. Um, as I said, we've been managing the production workloads for very, very large customers in many different industries their entire supply chains, HR, financial systems are running on IBM, either in the old traditional hosting models um, or also in our cloud models for the past 10 plus years, right, as IBM has evolved. So we have made sure that we do a whole different types of certifications with SAP to stay current. Um, many of these certifications are done either, you know, every two years, some are done every year. And if anyone checks, you know, the SAP Service Marketplace website, which is owned by SAP, you can see IBM listed in all these different angles as a certified provider. There isn't another provider that can claim this breadth in terms of certifications that IBM has done. And that's why customers can benefit either from one or two of these services that IBM provides, or obviously a combination as a single vendor if the customer needs. So, you know, we, we have the sets, we have the credibility, we have decades of, you know, delivery excellence in these areas, servicing these clients. Lots of the Fortune 100 customers actually are running um, their SAP workloads on the IBM systems, whether in traditional hosting or in a hybrid cloud deployment. Some cases we're actually, you know, providing services for customers that run their SAP workloads on premise. So. We cater to that, you know, sets of clients as well. And then of course, others that are purely on our cloud, um, IBM cloud, as well as hyperscalers. Yeah. So long list of certifications, it seems to be one of the biggest differentiators that you talked about. Talk to me a little bit about how things have evolved over the last, you know, 12 to 18 months in terms of, of how has IBM's focus changed for hybrid cloud with SAP? Yeah. yeah. So the focus changed, if you know, you know, until last year, we were called the cloud and cognitive company. Um, this year, of course, the, the whole uh, company has changed and we're going through a major transformation at the moment. We are the hybrid cloud company now. And that, that name change means a lot. Uh, it means a lot in the sense that it gives choices to the customer. That's what the whole uh, mission is all about. We want to make sure that customers are consuming IBM services and we, IBM wants to meet them where they want to be. So there's you know, flexibility of choices in, in terms of uh, hybrid, you know, the cloud deployment model. So most customers in the SAP area, you know, they're looking for either just a pure private cloud deployment or they're looking for a public cloud deployment or a combination. And some are because you know, their SAP's footprint sizes are so large Think about the multinational global companies, you know, and then they operate in so many different regions of the world and their data sizes of their databases are so large. Perhaps, you know, the public cloud really isn't a good fit, yet these customers are looking to move some sort of their workloads to the cloud. So that's where this hybrid cloud helps them because customers 
you know, 90 plus percent of the clients today are really not choosing one hyperscaler as their deployment option. They're really looking at multiple. So because they're running their workloads, not just SAP, but everything else, you know, SAP always brings along a whole bunch of other applications like tax applications and other interfaces, homegrown applications, analytics that the customers are using. So if you want to take advantage of, of the true hybrid cloud and the benefits of all the various um, deployments and hyperscalers available in that region, really the hybrid cloud strategy from IBM is a perfect fit because we give them choices of deployment. We're not saying that you have to deploy on IBM cloud. Um, we're saying you can deploy either on-premise, AWS, Azure, IBM cloud, really what makes sense, you know, best sense for the types of workloads that the customer is looking at. So that's how the strategy for IBM has completely changed to meet the clients, you know, for what they're actually looking for. Yeah. Talk to me a little bit about the go-to-market. So. IBM and SAP, long-standing, decades-old relationship, a lot of certifications that you talked about. We're yeah. talking about business-critical applications. You mentioned supply chain a yes. minute ago, and I can't help but think at how supply chain has been affected in the last year. What is the go-to-market approach with respect to uh, providing like consultation services to help customers determine, should we migrate to what hyperscaler and how and when? Yeah, so we can help them with that. Um, so hyper, hyperscalers, obviously, you know, IBM has been listed, for example, as the leader in, in Gartner 2020. And, you know, there's lots of other stats that show them that IBM is a leader in application services, in consulting services, application management services, as well as managed services. So these are all different, right? And you can see us being listed as a leader, either it's in Gartner or IDC or Forrester Wave, and for many reasons, and, you know, IBM, actually has won series of uh, pinnacle awards from SAP over the years. How this helps the clients really determine is that, you know, IBM obviously does a lot of studies externally. We have internal as well as external facing views of comparatives of the various hyperscalers, um, you know, including AWS, Azure, GCP, and so on. So when a customer comes to us for asking for advice um, and so on, we basically look at our own intellectual properties, all the analysis that has been done. And more importantly, we look at the, the full scope of services that the customer want, is, is doing. What sort of a business are they in? We have industry experts. Um, there's ERP strategy um, folks within IBM. So, you know, they go after a certain industry and when they've, let's say, you know, they've gone after the oil and gas industry, for example, they will look at multiple customers in that particular space. So based on their experiences, we can actually define the right roadmap for the client to be able to help them to move their workloads to this hybrid cloud strategy that I just mentioned, right? So that's how we can help them because we have the expertise in that industry as well. And I'm curious, uh, Madhuri, in the last year with so much flux and rapidly changing market conditions, did you see any one or two industries in particular really leading the charge here and coming to IBM and SAP for help on this transformation journey, which has been accelerated by a couple of years? Certainly the retail industry, for sure, right? I mean, in spite of the crisis, I think the retail industry did pretty well, right? Because people still had to buy stuff. Of course, the whole buying behavior changed, no question. Um, you and I don't know about you, Lisa, but for me, you know, I was never a major online shopper. Oh yeah, you know, I buy just about everything. Um, previously it used to be select things here and there, but now it's totally changed, right? So that industry certainly has accelerated, no question. Um, we've had a lot of those coming. The other industries that I've seen the change in the last uh, 12, 18 months is really, for example, you know, the banking industry and so on. Um, IBM basically, you know, launched a lot of services in the financial services sector for this reason. Um, so those are of course transforming very fast to keep up with the market. Um, and I'm sure there's others, right? But these are the two that <laughs> come to mind. Yeah. Yeah, two uh, that have been most affected and needed to pivot so quickly in addition to healthcare. Let me ask you one final question here before we wrap. Talk to me about the advantages of using the PMC Partner Managed Cloud SAP license resale model. The advantages of using that and the benefits. Sure. Um, so we, you know, so far our discussion was really focused around, you know, the various service capabilities that IBM has 
in terms of our capabilities for helping clients with hyperscalers and hybrid cloud. We also need to spend a little bit of time, you know, talking about the operations model, right? So when they're running their production workloads on IBM, PMC is yet another dimension. So what PMC Partner Managed Cloud is really um, some very limited partnerships that SAP does, and the IBM is, is the lead on that one. In this space, what SAP allows is the partner, which in this case is IBM, to resell the SAP software license to a customer. So IBM has the rights globally to resell the license. And why is that beneficial to the client? Because now um, IBM can actually turn around the SAP license and have the customer pay us in a SaaS model. So it basically is now an OPEX model uh, where the customer is basically paying you know, a monthly fee as an example. So there's no upfront cost to the client. And they basically pay IBM and then IBM pays SAP. So IBM is kind of holding the risk, if you will, uh, on behalf of the customer. It gives customers more choices, more flexibilities, better pricing approach. So if you know the customer wants, as an example, to buy everything, the full package, including systems implementation services, deployment models uh, with choices you know, on a cloud, whether it's IBM cloud or others, as well as the license itself, IBM has this end-to-end -end capability today. We've been selling it to several clients for a few years in several geographies, right? So that's Got really it. the advantage behind it. Excellent, thanks for breaking that down, Madhuri, and joining me today talking about what's new with IBM and SAP, the opportunities for customers to accelerate their digital transformation. We appreciate you stopping by. Thank you very much, Lisa, I truly enjoyed it. Thank you. Good, me too. For Madhuri Chavla, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching the Cube's coverage of IBM Think 2021.